Incense, sticks, potions. Where is a match? Okay, that lightning strike was a little bit scary. Hello, hello, my fishies. It's everyone's favorite time of year again. Ah, the end of the year where the holidays start coming and they don't stop coming until you are in January and you wonder what happened. I'm just kidding, sort of. We're all here for Halloween, so let's get our spook on with a stained glass window and stonewall backdrop. It's also easy to break down and put away. I've been testing it out. It's not perfected, but it's basically there. If you want to work on it yourself and perfect it and share your notes, you know where the comment section is. Let's go ahead and get started. And just to let you know, all the measurements, listings, and item supply can be found at thefiretunaclub.blogspot.com. While scissors will work for cutting this, I strongly suggest a guillotine cutter or a rotary trimmer. If you don't have either of those, I suggest sitting down with all your chipboard, your scissors, and your favorite TV show and watch all seven seasons of it. The chipboard you do need for this project, however, you probably already have, like check your recycling, raid your cabinets, any kind of cereal or snack box will do for this. Break down all your boxes in advance so you have a nice neat pile to work from and manageable pieces. With your scissors and your pile of chipboard ready to go, you're going to want to cut all your brick pieces four by two inches. You're going to want a lot of them, around 70 if you're making a wall very similar to mine. When you're done, your trash pile's gonna look like this. <laughs> Just kidding, it looks more like this. And you should actually have a nice hefty stack of bricks to work with. Don't throw away your garbage pile yet, you will need it later, so let's go. To avoid a debate about Schrodinger's cat, we're gonna need you to get your feline overlord out of that box because you need it for the next step. With your cutting implement of choice, you're going to want to cut your cardboard a 30 by 18 inches. You'll want to mark your middle for the wall, and then you'll want to figure out where you want your windows, mirror your measurements from one side to the other, and then cut out your windows. And don't worry if you make some mistakes when you're cutting. This will all be covered up. Grab your supplies and let's start gluing. In true Fire Tuna Club fashion, this craft project was not interrupted. I recorded it in one solid video, in one solid night, with no child assistance, and I actually managed to not get in front of the camera, nobody did in fact, as well as the fact that I was on point the entire time and was not off the side where the camera could not see me. So, be like me. <laughs> yeah. With a protective sheet or mat for the surface you're cutting on, you're going to want to flip your wall over and use an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors to cut off all the extra brick that is hanging out in the window holes and on the ends of your walls. Set your hot glue gun up and let it warm up while you go ahead and cut some scrap foam. And yes, I said scrap foam. You only need to cut pieces that are 2 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. And you don't have to be accurate with this because you are going to keep trimming these as you go. You will cut four large bricks that are meant to be for the top and the bottom of both windows. Here's a loose diagram that kind of explains how you're going to cut and how many you're going to cut. I haven't forgot about the hot glue or the paperboard scraps. Slather your wall in hot glue and get your bricks put on. They should look something like this when you're done. You can leave the edges sloppy, but for the sake of continuity between the wall and the windows, I did take a ruler and an exacto knife to cut off all the uneven bits. Then it comes time to paint. I start out by mixing some clear glue that I had laying around with some acrylic gesso. Gesso? Gesso? Anyway. I also use a trash stick and stir it because it was in reach. And because there is glue in it, I do use one of my unfortunate abused paintbrushes. So once that's all mixed, I go ahead and further abuse the paintbrush by painting the wall with my glue and gesso mix. 
After that's dried, I do start out with a base coat of pewter gray. Get the whole thing covered with that base coat. Don't worry about being perfect, this is only layer one of many. Once the first layer has dried, you'll want to use some more pewter gray, light mocha, and granite gray. Get your designated makeup painting brush and go really willy-nilly with the painting. You want this to be as random as possible to uh, get that like rock look. Although be very light with the light mocha because it adds too much color in some cases. Once that layer has dried, follow up with the grays and dab your paintbrush so you have a little bit of variety in terms of the speckles. And then we're going to go to the third layer with the wash. For my specific wash mix, I used a little bit of black paint, some chocolate bar brown paint, mixed some water and a smidge of dish soap into it to get it to nice and drippy. Stir together and then adjust if you see the need to, which I did. And then comes the excruciatingly painful part. Can you feel my hesitation as I try to trust the process? Yeah, yeah, anyway. Don't forget to have some paper towels handy to wipe off all the excess wash. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think I put enough water in mine, so I had to make sure to be on top of wiping it or it left some pretty obvious marks. But hey, it still turned out pretty awesome. We finish off the last layer of the wall. With the dry brushing the wall, I chose another light gray for this. And you can seal the wall if you so choose. I did not because I liked the very matte look of it. And now we'll actually want to get on to working on the windows. My initial prototypes were done with doll packaging. And I also did attempt to use um, page protectors, but they warped I think that might be solved with a little bit of tape while you're working on it. I ultimately decided plexiglass was the material for me. Choose the window material that best works for your budget and project needs. If you choose to work with plexiglass like I did, please note that while it is flexible like doll packaging, it does snap at a certain point. So put it under stress carefully. <laughs> Now the best way to control how it will snap is to use an X-Acto knife. A few cuts will do, you don't have to cut through the material. This will help it snap properly when you're bending it. Just like uh, that. Yes, your cuts are 10 by 5. I know I keep saying the windows 8 and a quarter by 3 and 3 quarters. There's a reason for this, which I will get to shortly. However, the one thing you have to do before you go on to the next step is decide if your stained glass is gonna be perfectly see-through or slightly, um, I wanna say frosted, but basically just that it distorts the image enough that you can't see it clearly. This is something I actually learned from Bentley House Miniatures. Amazing channel, by the way. If you don't already follow it, go over there and look. Uh, just take sandpaper. I think I was using about 100 or 120 grit and scuff the uh, pretty smoothness out of whatever you happen to be working on. Note, this does not work with the plastic sheet protectors. Absolutely useless on that. But doll packaging and the plexiglass does wonders. So just sand it until you're happy with it, and then you should have this effect. If you have a Cricut, have your Cricut cut the parts and do the fun part after that of getting it off the mat without ripping or tearing it. Yay. I did eventually ditch the prototype design that I picked out because I felt it didn't suit the project. I did make my own using Inkscape. You can do the same. Print it out on some cardstock paper and use an X-Acto knife and scissors and cut it out if you do not have a Cricut. Make sure that you have two. Mirrored or not is up to you and let's get on to the next step. In my opinion, here comes the most satisfying part of the project. Get your clear glue and just pour. Full disclosure, I haven't tried this with an unsanded piece. I don't know how well it'll stick. That being said, let's go ahead and spread the glue out. I put the cat out under the plastic so you can see the difference the glue makes with the sanded plexiglass as well as for your crafting purposes to make sure you have glue everywhere you need it. 
Then you just drop your cutout onto the glue and do your best to kind of gently smooth out the glue on top of it without warping your image. Another reason I urge you to have extra is to be able to test out your materials, especially if you're not using the same materials as I am. Water-based materials will reactivate with glue. My alcohol markers did their own weird things reactivating with themselves. So just try those out on the side before you potentially ruin your window. Then you'll want to color in your window. I went with a starry night theme. You can do whatever colors you want. And I specifically used uh, alcohol markers and water-based markers that you can get at Walmart. So nothing special there. Repeat the process on the second window. Go ahead and color in your window and then you will layer on glue as much as you want to achieve the look you want. I think I used three coats of glue for the finished effect. I left the air bubbles in there because my brain was like, RUSTIC! <laughs> so, on to the attaching, which is super easy. All you need is your wall, your window, and some duct tape! <laughs> then it's just a matter of adjusting it until you're happy with it. And then we can move on to the final step. What do bookends? A wooden skewer. And an empty pizza box. Have to do with the next part. We're going to make this wall stand up. Mark the placement of your bookends on the back of your wall. On both sides. Hey look, this is the moment I realized I was giving a thumbs up way too many times. Take an X-Acto knife to that pizza box and cut a square that is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Repeat until you have four, as well as eight pieces that measure one and a quarter by two and three quarters. For optimal support, cut the cardboard with the corrugation perpendicular to your dowel rod. Assemble four rectangles to one square with a space in the middle for your chopstick. Hot glue or craft glue will work, much like my support substitute should. Add or subtract from your support blocks as needed to ensure a tight fit and attach it to your wall. Two stick bricks per bookend, assembled as shown. Let's see how effective this method is by putting the wall together. In the dark, with bad cell phone footage, one handed. And now comes the worst part of doll footage. Setting up the scene. I just wanted to say, really thank you all for watching another video. I hope I might have inspired you to do something spooky this Halloween for your doll scenes. Or have inspired you to just get your spook on in your house. Where am I going with this? Oh right, the cardboard scraps, right. So about that, what we're going to do with 